Hey guys, so let's now move it on to have a look at returns to scale. Now, returns to scale are really important to understand, both when it comes to uh, the production function work that we did in our last lesson, and just notice that I've kept up plant one's information. We're going to be referring to that to actually establish the return to scale there in just a moment. Uh, they're also important when it comes to actually looking at the long run average cost curve, so just be aware of that. So returns to scale refer to the increases in output that result from increasing inputs. So it's really about the actual increase in, in this case, labor inputs, and what increase does that then derive in terms of the output. So there's three potential scenarios that uh, organizations face, and that is firstly, increasing returns to scale. So this is what you are likely to see as the firm actually begins to actually put in factor inputs, whether they are labor or whether they are capital, as they utilize more labor or capital initially, the firm is likely to experience increasing returns to scale. And this is when the percentage increase in output is greater than the percentage increase in input. So let's just take a little look at that uh, just here. Now, to help you to establish these differing returns to scale, it's useful to use the um, percentage change uh, formula. So you've got change divided by original times 100. Uh, now, we can see that we're increasing our factor inputs, our labor, by 100% as we move from one laborer to two laborers. So that is an increase of 100%. But look at what we also see here. We see the actual output increase from 4 through to 10 and that is actually a 150% increase. So what you simply do there is you take six as the change and divide it by the original four, and therefore it's 150%. Now, we see that that is an increasing return to scale. Now, what organizations may then face thereafter is constant returns to scale. Uh, so constant returns to scale is when the percentage increase in output is equal to the percentage increase in inputs. So here we've got a 50% increase in labor inputs now because we're moving from two to three. So one divided by two, of course, would equal 50%. So if we saw a 50% increase here, then of course that would be a constant return to scale. But what we can clearly see is only actually uh, a 30% increase because we're moving up three from 10, of course. So what we are already seeing now is the fact that the factor inputs are increasing at a greater rate now than the output is. So that means the firm is actually beginning to experience decreasing returns to scale. Now, decreasing returns to scale is when the percentage uh, increase in output is less than the percentage increase in factor inputs. Uh, okay, so here you're adding more labor, but you are not getting that same return in terms of the actual overall output generated by those laborers. So we can see that setting in here. And once it sets in, uh, it's, it's of course going to continue and we can see this here as we go from 13 to 15 where we've got an increase in 2, so 2 divided by 13 here. We've got a 33.3% increase in the labour force, okay, uh, but we would only see something like 15.6% increase in the actual output. Uh, for our last example that we've got here, as we move from four laborers to five, well, that's 25% increase in the workforce. But look, the output only increases by one. So as that output only increases by one, one divided by 15, well, that only gives us a uh, potential return of about 6.7%. So once again, we see those decreasing returns, the fact that those factor input increases are greater than the actual output generated increases. Okay, guys, this is important stuff. I hope that's been useful. See you next time.